Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about WebPub Sub on Azure. Now, this is a service that is not one of the more popular services on Azure, but in my opinion, it's one of the most useful services, especially whenever you're thinking about building applications that need some kind of real-time communication. Now, typically when you're dealing with something like a web-based app or even a mobile app, most of the time you're dealing with the HTTP-based protocol, and that requires that the client actually initiate a connection back to the server, and then it will request some data and then pull that data back to the device or the client that is running the application. That probably works fine for applications that are interacting with data quite a bit. You're just basically taking data from a server, displaying that data, and you might interact with that data at some level, and then you will post that back to a server, usually just after you've updated the data or maybe you've created some kind of new data. But in any case, that's a very request response type application. Sometimes you might need to push data from the server to the client without the client initiating the connection. It might be the case where you have one client that creates some data that other clients might be interested in so that one client sends the data back to the server and the server just turns around and sends that right back out to the clients. Now, there are scenarios where you might have the server that creates some data and then pushes that out to the clients as well. And all of these, there's no waiting on the client to establish a connection. It can happen as soon as the data becomes available. And so you don't have to create some kind of cache or some kind of temporary storage. You just basically relay the data between the client and the server and vice versa. Now, there are certainly other ways to do this on Azure with something like SignalR, but we'll cover that in a different video. But the main benefit of using something like WebPub Sub is it's strictly based on WebSockets. And WebSockets are a fairly common technology that is well supported by pretty much every kind of device that has an HTTP based client on it. So you don't have to have a browser up and running to use this technology, although the browser is probably going to be one of the more common use cases for it. You can use mobile application development frameworks. You can use command line interfaces. You can even use something like IoT. It doesn't really matter as long as it supports WebSockets, it will work with this particular service on Azure. In addition to being fairly simple on the way that it connects, it's also got a rather rich object model that you don't have to use all of it to make your application work, but the object model is there so that you can create some really robust topologies within your application so that you can organize things and have clients communicating uh, with other clients and then being able to filter based on different kinds of objects that they might be using or different kinds of groups they may be in, whatever it might be. But let's go over the object model first and then we'll create an app that uses bits and pieces of this to show you how this works. So the most basic unit in the model is of course the service itself. And this is what you're gonna be paying for. You can use the dev test of course for development purposes, but you can use the standard and premium SKU. And the biggest difference between these two is availability options. One of them can take advantage of availability zones within a region. So WebPub Sub service needs to have at least one hub for it to work. So you can create just one hub and that'd be fine for everything that you might need, uh, which is gonna be the case for my demo, but you can have multiple hubs. Basically what this allows you to do is have these kind of independent objects that share the messaging resources, but each one of these can be independent from one another. So you need at least one, but you can have more than one if you need that. Now a hub has two high level what I might call logical objects in the, the, the hub that you can use to organize the resources. And the way this works is with groups and users. So a group is just a group of users. Now a user does not have to be a member of a group, but a group really needs to have a user as a part of it to be a meaningful uh, context. So the user could be a member of a group. It doesn't have to be a member of a group or a user can be a member of multiple groups. So a user can join and leave groups or it doesn't even have to use groups at all. Now, the reason you'd want to have this object model is because it's a very powerful model for how you can send messages. So if I want to send a message, I can send it to either a hub. I can send it to basically everybody on the hub. So that means all of the users that are on the hub will get the message on all of their connections. I can send it to a group. So that means that all the users in the group with all of their connections will get the message. I can send it to an individual user, which means that all of the user's connections will get the message, or I can send it to an individual connection itself. So at any one of those levels, I can send a message and that will allow me to have broadcasts or I can have very pointed messages depending on what I need for my particular application. So this allows me to have some rather interesting permutations and you can use this to basically create some pretty complex topologies with groups and users and then have multiple users coming in with multiple connections. So it's a very robust model and it can create some really interesting applications with this model. So I'm gonna show you an app that I wrote. This app is a little bit different than a typical chat app. 
it is a chat app that allows me to have a two-way communication between users. So this one is a little bit different though, because it has a twist on it. it. It's doing public key encryption on the messages. So what that means is when I send a message from myself to another user, it's going to use that user's public key to encrypt the message. And then the user will have the private key to decrypt the message. And my user will also have a public and private key uh, to encrypt and decrypt messages as well. Another thing I like about this style of application is the way that it allows you to build highly scalable applications in the cloud. So this is a very much a cloud first paradigm. The client itself is written in HTML, so it's going to be running in a browser, but all the backend systems are running on serverless technologies. So of course, you're going to be using function apps on Azure uh, to mediate a lot of the communication between the the, the client, so all of its HTTP requests are gonna be handled by Azure Functions, and that's what's gonna be brokering the WebSockets. The WebSockets themselves are gonna be coming from WebPub Sub, and there is some state that has to be maintained in this application, so it's gonna use an Azure storage table for that. But all of these services are serverless services, so this application could really scale pretty broadly, and it would be a very scalable application even in its current state. Now, if I wanted to make this kind of a globe spanning application, I would need to tweak it some. And now I probably wouldn't use Azure storage tables. I'd probably go over to Cosmos DB to do that. But in any case, the basic application as it sits now is fairly scalable as it sits. And it would also be very cost effective to run this because everything about it is mostly done on a consumption based model. So you're not going to be doing large reservations of capacity on Azure just to have a simple app running, but rather you're going to be using very efficient resources on Azure, which keeps the total cost of ownership down as well as the maintenance down. So this app is doing something that's pretty straightforward, but I wanted to walk through the, the flow of the app first. So it's going to call a function called index to return uh, the contents of index.html. And that's just using static uh, files uh, to basically serve up the client. Now, if I was going to be doing this in a globally scalable application, I would probably use something like Azure Static Web Apps that I'm doing this more out of convenience right here. Once the app's in the browser, the user will type in a username, and that username is how the user will be identified on the PubSub service. So with that, they will then click start chat. And then what that does is calls an endpoint to register this new user. And that new user basically stores uh, the public and private key uh, locally, but it also stores the public key after it's created inside of a storage table. So the public uh, uh, key along with the username are stored basically as a key value pair in the storage table. And then that is made available to all of the other users on the hub. So what the other users will do is download that. But, but to do that, they need to be informed by the service that there's a new user. And that's also what new user does. So it's going to basically broadcast the fact that there's a new user on the hub and the users that are currently connected will then go out and grab a new list of users from that um, particular list that we have just updated with this new user. So they're gonna download a list of users and all of their public keys. So once that happens, every other client is now ready to talk to this new user. Now, the next thing the client will do then is negotiate a WebSocket connection. So it's going to call an endpoint called negotiate. Now negotiate basically is going to talk to WebPub sub to get the credentials for the user. And so it's going to basically get a, a token and the endpoint is going to return that back to the client. And then the client is going to then use that to create a WebSocket connection to that endpoint. And once it has that WebSocket connection, then it is ready to chat. But the client also needs to know what the public keys are. So it's gonna get its own copy of the users from that uh, get users endpoint. And that get users endpoint then is going to return the user list along with all the public keys um, that are useful for chatting back and forth. And then of course the user can then start sending and receiving messages. Now sending messages happens by way of calling another function, uh, but the receiving of messages happens by way of the public um, endpoints that are made available through the WebSocket. So the WebSockets then will be available to receive those messages. I do want to look at the code for this. Now, I'm not going to show you everything, but I do want to show you the parts that are relevant for uh, this particular application related to function apps interacting with PubSub. And that's mostly going to be in this new users function right here, negotiate and send message. And so the first one that gets called, of course, is this new user one. And uh, this one is a pretty straightforward function. Uh, if I open this up in Notepad, and let's get some, uh, make this a little bigger here. 
uh, you can see the parts that are relevant for broadcasting that message when a new user becomes available is this context binding right here. So it's going to context binding actions. Now actions is the name of the binding that uh, is wired up to webpub sub. And basically I'm just saying, send the, uh, this message to all. And this is all managed by the Azure functions runtime. So I don't have to wire up really anything other than just tell it, this is what I want to do. The action name is send to all. Uh, here's the data, uh, which is just a JSON object. And then the data type of course is JSON. And so it's broadcasting uh, just a JSON object to all of the users on my hub. So this binding is pretty straightforward. It looks like this right here. Let me open up this guy. And the binding is called actions and it's just the web pub sub binding. And so you don't really have to do any kind of magic. It's just built into the platform uh, for all this to work. So with that binding uh, wired up and everything's there, you just basically populate it, what you want to do, and then it takes care of the rest. Now, the other interesting part of this is in negotiate right here. And negotiate is a very light function. In fact, it's basically five lines of code if you, uh, and you could really even make this shorter uh, if you wanted to move this, uh, this little brace right here up right here but it's relaying the connection information back to the browser. So it's setting the browser uh, context, uh, the body of that to the connection information that was retrieved from WebPub sub. And that again is all brokered by Azure functions again. So all of the plumbing for this is not really something that you have to wire up. It's just there and you can take advantage of it. The real magic happens in the binding for this particular function right here. So if I go over here and I open up this uh, binding, you can see that I have this binding right here called WebPub sub connection. And the connection itself is what shows up inside of the JavaScript code. But notice that the user ID is a query parameter. So whenever I call this endpoint, I'm telling it to look at the query parameter and use user ID to identify the user on WebPub sub. And that's where it's going to get its connection information from. And that's what gets relayed back to the browser. So again, that's a pretty straightforward uh, way of managing this. So the other one that is somewhat interesting is this send message uh, function right here. And it's going to use that same binding that we saw a minute ago, that web pub sub binding with the actions uh, called actions. And it's wiring it up to a hub called chat. Uh, it looks identical to the one that we just looked at for new user. The only difference in this one is that instead of sending to all, it's just sending it to a user. And to identify the user, it's being passed in to this particular function as part of the body. And so it's passing a JSON object into this guy and it's getting the name off of the body to tell WebPub sub what user I'm intending to send this to. And then uh, from there, the message then is then relayed uh, to WebPub sub to this particular user. And that's how the function knows where to send the message once I've actually uh, sent the message from the browser to this function. So pretty straightforward right here as well. But the reason I'm showing you this is because all of this code uh, is basically just taking advantage of what's already there inside of the function app runtime for Node.js, and this is available for other uh, frameworks as well, but it's pretty straightforward. It's very simple, it's low hanging fruit that's very easy to use. So this application is really lightweight on the server side, and so it means it can scale uh, widely and it runs really quickly because it doesn't have much overhead either. So let's go and demo this. I'm gonna type func start to start the function run runtime locally and starting Azure function core tools. Now, uh, these are the, the function endpoints I can call here. And so the this is the one that returns the index.html file as a, a client back to the browser. And these are the four that drive it. Let's just recap. Get users returns a list of users and their public keys. Negotiate is the one that reaches out to pub sub with the user information to get WebSocket endpoint information. And then it returns that back to the client. New user is the one that registers the user uh, inside the storage table. It records their username and their public key, and then it does the broadcast message to let everybody know that there's a new user out there. And then send message is, of course, the one that will send a message from one user to another. So let's go ahead and pull this up in a browser. So I'm gonna right click and get Google Chrome here. Let's get this user. 
And it uh, looks like I already have one pulled up there. But let's uh, launch a new instance and um, get a new fresh copy right here. Here we go. And now I have my instance pulled up here, right here. But to demo this, I really need two instances. So I'm going to start a second instance. And let's kind of get these side by side right here, if I can do that. Um, and just try to, try to finagle this around a little bit. Um, I know there's a shortcut key that you could probably do this with, but I can't remember what it is. But anyways, I'm going to run this one as Blaze, and I'm going to start chatting as Blaze. And this is going to pull back a list of users uh, for everybody that I've ever used this app with. So April Blaze, E, E, and A, G. And um, I'm going to start this one as April right here and uh, start chatting with April. And it's getting a list of the same users. So uh, basically, uh, identical other than the fact that one is using a user called April and another one is using a user called Blaze. So um, I'm gonna send a message to April. So let's do that. Let's go, uh, hello there, uh, and uh, send that message over. And you can see that it got sent uh, from Blaze to April, and there's the local copy there. Now, if I send one from April to Blaze, I need to select Blaze as the intended user and hit send. And you can send, see that it got sent right here. Um, in the And so there is a couple of messages flowing back and forth right there. So again, a fairly straightforward application, but it is doing the encryption behind the scenes right here. So here are the, the messages that are going back and forth. Um, you can see that that's encrypted. I can only decrypt that with the public key, which is only available to the local user. Uh, but um, the public keys are available for everybody because you need the public key to encrypt it. But you can see that it's doing an exchange of a public key up here. That's the uh, WebSocket endpoint information. Uh, that was sent back from that negotiate. Here's the public key that was stored inside of the, the table. Uh, there's a lot of other logging that goes on in the context of this. So again, it's a fairly straightforward application, but uh, I do think it uh, aptly demonstrates the way PubSub works. And I'll make this uh, code available on GitHub and I'll link it in the video description below. But if you like this application, please uh, share it with your friends and your, uh, your colleagues. And hopefully this will be the first of many videos uh, working with this style of app dev where you're like building everything in a certain Please consider subscribing model. to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.